Good morning, and welcome back to the third ever episode of Saturday Morning Switch, brought to you by Retro Remaster. The idea that Konami is spearheading a console launch in 2017 with the most attractive third party offering is a bizarre statement after everything that company has aimed for in the past year or so, but that's the reality of the Switch launch lineup. Super Bomberman R, Bomberman's first major new game since Bomberman Live in 2010, instantly stands out for its competition of Just Dance and Skylanders by virtue of being both new and iconic which makes less sense now that I say it, but you get what I mean. I'll assume by now everyone knows all about Bomberman's mental multiplayer antics that only get more chaotic the more people join in, which is as true now as it was back in the 1980s. But for those in need of a briefing, well, you run around a maze of bricks, placing bombs and avoiding their blasts while carrying debris in the maze so you can reach your opponents and blow them up. Along the way you'll get parrots to let you run faster, lay more bombs, and hit further away, and abilities that let you kick or throw bombs, among others. There have been some updates to the formula for this new game. On some levels, the floor itself can be damaged, slowly shrinking the playable space and forcing you to play smarter and more frantically to survive. We've also been informed that there are 3D stages in the game, though I've yet to see any demoed. Having to worry about attacks from above and below will certainly add another dimension to the game and make for some ultra intense confrontations, but whether players can process the extra information or whether it will just be overwhelming is another matter, as it can be hard enough to track everything happening on a 2D battlefield. The other notable change is, weirdly, the visuals, or more specifically, the photorealistic backgrounds. It's hard to tell exactly why Konami felt this was a necessary addition, especially with the rest of the game being the classic bright and cartoony Bomberman aesthetic, but maybe there's a reason that will become apparent in the full game. Maybe. As for the multiplayer, which is what this game will heavily be selling itself on, up to 8 players will be able to engage in both online and local multiplayer though the latter is limited to 2 players per Switch console, so you need to land at least 4 together to reach the game's full potential. Then again, if you start trying to do multiplayer on the move of your Switch, you'll bump into the more fundamental problem of the screen not being big enough. What's easy to track on a big TV is a nightmare on a tablet that's propped a distance away so both players can see it and use their controllers. I mean, imagine if you've been trying to play Bomberman DS on just the one system with 8 people, and you could start to see the problem. But perhaps the most interesting part of this Bomberman title isn't the multiplayer, but the game's story mode. While some Bombmans have had interesting adventures, I personally am particularly fond of Bomberman 64's, this one has been advertised as more of a sequence of traditional Bomberman stages, with Konami estimating about 50 levels count. These levels will also have a variety of objectives, though we're yet to know what those will be outside of kill everything. Maybe some will ask you to defend certain areas or clear all the debris of a level, or limit your abilities. Certainly there have been enough variants to the Bomberman mechanics over the past 30 years to allow for some exciting challenges in the finished game. There's also been a lot of hubbub over the game featuring fully animated cutscenes and voice acting, though again, what that exactly offers to the franchise is anybody's guess, especially since it doesn't sound like the story is going to be a narrative toward a force. However, despite these odd focuses on photorealistic backgrounds and voice acting, at the end of the day, Bombman's gameplay is still as addictive as ever, and interesting variations like floor destruction and layered levels add even more details to keep track of, building on the manic feeling the series has always been so great and encouraging. But there is the one fundamental problem, and that is, like so many things with the Switch, the price. At £50 or $60, the age old, is it really worth it? Debate rears its ugly head. And it's hard to tell right now, as a lot of that value will come down to how much content the game has to offer. Certainly, if you're after the best multiplayer experience on day one of the Switch, this is it. But with titles like Mario Kart 8 and Splatoon 2 only a few months down the line and offering more substantial experiences, Super Bomberman R is a tough fight ahead of it, even with its only real competition being 1-2 Switch for the right to be the game you buy that isn't Zelda. Me? I hope it does well. It's been a decade since I last bombed a man, and this strikes me as the perfect time to jump back in, so here's hoping for a good one. Thanks for watching this episode, and I promise to be less of a downer next episode when we talk about all the indie support we'll be seeing on the Switch when it launches. And in the meantime, why not give this video a like, subscribe to our channel, or leave us a comment and tell us what you think. Thanks as always for watching, and I'll see you next week.